right, Ellen, yeah, uh, I'll see you at the basketball game, say, next Saturday. Uh, hope it all blows over for you. Greetings, gentle viewers! This film is shit! Pax masculina, Latin for the male piece, and no, I'm not talking about genitals, is an alternate reality steampunk adventure set in a brutal world where women never got the right to vote. Misogynist theocrats are in charge, and sex say 20 somethings fight for equal rights. It sounds like it could be the love child of bitch slap and sucker punch, and not only because physical violence might be preferable to knowing it exists. I've never heard anything so proud to be so shit. If there's a way to make the words scame horn impressive, midi trumpets are probably not it. I love the noose, it's like it's there to remind us that there's a less painful way out of this. I'll read this so you don't have to. It's the backstory of the United States of Gore. In the early 1900s, a man called The Prophet quickly rose to religious significance. Well, of course, he'd hardly become a janitor that would just be a waste of the name. I am so disappointed in the lack of detail over who this guy was. The early 1900s was an incredible time when it came to religious nut jobs. Theosophy was doing well, spiritualism was common, Aleister Crowley was at the height of his powers. Pun very intended. I don't expect much from this film, but I want more than a vague, this guy called the Prophet took over America, made it isolationist, and turned it into a dick dictatorship. lol. What I find interesting is that even though the Prophet made himself dictator, apparently the only people who opposed the destruction of democracy were women. But I suppose that might be why women were subjugated Old Testament style. All the men were whining about losing the vote, so to shut them up, the Prophet gave them a whole new gender to lord over. It took the sting out of them being fucked over by the new ruling class. Even though it was the early 1900s and they were already lording it over women. And away under this system, America thrived, while the rest of the world descended into anarchy because of the pernicious influence of lady brains and politics. In this new America, there's no war or poverty because it is a deeply stupid film that doesn't understand reality or history. This intro directly connects peace and the lack of poverty to the subjugation of women, even though for much of human history, women have been subjugated and there's been a fuckload of poverty. And almost as much war. Yes, Margaret Thatcher and others caused their fair share of both, but generally women historically weren't behind that. It then directly connects these two things that it frames as good, the lack of poverty, which, unless you're a cunt, is good, and the subjugation of women, which, unless you're a cunt, is bad, to the destruction of democracy, which it also frames as good. Part of me's wondering what this film hates more. Women, freedom, or America. The rest of me's expecting to find out very, very presently. The one idea I really like is the suffragettes evolving into a full-on paramilitary organization as the country got ever more brutal with its treatment of women. They become a gree gree for moderate and respectable feminism now, but the suffragettes broke shit, stabbed guys, died for the cause, and learned fucking jujitsu. You know your revolution succeeded when you're held up as an example to curve the extremity of your intellectual descendants that are way more moderate in tactics and laid back than you ever were. And don't misunderstand me, I'm in favor of modern feminism, but if you think it's somehow extreme compared to earlier versions, you really need to read a history book. Like, any history book. They're educational, and you might accidentally find them with pertinent information. Anyway, the suffragettes evolved into the women's resistance movement. AKA, the worm! <sighs> if you don't know what that's from, maybe you should watch the Max Magician review. It's quite good. I mean, the film is fucking terrible, and I'm only passable, but the review, quite good. <sighs> In our reality, the worm is known as the day after Trump got inaugurated. I'm guessing men are the weaver and the wild is genderqueer people. The film starts as it means to go on, with the execution of one of the members of the women's resistance movement. I know this looks bad, but spare a thought for all the other women in the film. There are fates worse than death. Like being in this film for longer than 30 seconds. I can't help but notice, but their 2016 looks a bit technologically backward compared to ours. That'll be because Hedy Lamar's genius was even more ignored in this universe than it was in ours. These women think they are fighting for liberty, but are in fact blinded from the truth. The only right women have is to serve men. Dude, I'm not sure a Twilight Zone episode, no matter how good, is 
technically a right. I wonder what life would be like if women had the right to vote. A better question would be, who do you vote for? It's a dictatorship. Or did you subjugate the meaning of words too? Maybe they vote for set decorator. If so, impeach the fucker. I get that you got this weird anachronism thing going on, but those 80s Vegas hotel curtains have to go. Maybe joining the WRM wouldn't be such a bad idea. Aren't you afraid of a hanging? <gasps> it's not funny. Well, hopefully it will be by the time I'm finished with it. So here's an idea. Take down those fucking curtains and replace them with whoever designed them. This is the cue for the teacher, a man who resembles a cross between Chet near the end of Weird Science and a human being, to give a wooden performance. What did I say about talking? And beat her for being loud, sassy, and generally having her own personality. Beth, I've already warned you once. It could be wrong, but I think her lack of reaction might be a protest against his acting. The teacher is played by the writer-director of this thing, making that the creative equivalent of the grin someone gives when they love the smell of their own farts. Ah, mistress. Um, it's important that I discuss this with you. You've been putting it off too long. No. I'm sorry, I'm going to get no. on anyway. Um, Dominic no. Rabb has been getting in touch about the Brexit deal that we've been talking about. You know, the way... Attention. Attention, citizens! We've just invented colour television! Some of the paramilitary women have bombed an orphanage in an attempt to kill the prophet. The current prophet. The original one's not immortal or anything. At least the TV claims they bombed an orphanage. We didn't see it happen. And later on, we'll see how unnecessary that is to kill the guy. The city's in lockdown, so naturally no one notices the woman in miniskirts killing people. There must be tactical advantages that come with dressing like extras in a low-budget pirate porno, such as passing free weights among themselves and showing a modicum of knee. Take it off. As you wish. That seduction was so fucking obvious, it's like she managed presence level 6, and that's technically not possible. Clearly, 100 years, a servile woman who can't say no is selected for credulous stupidity in man. It looks like most of the technological advancement in the previous century went into the establishing shots. Things like street lights that don't fit with the rest of the world, and CGI explosions that are a desperate attempt to keep things interesting. You incompetent moron! Hey! The special effects are ripping themselves! Oh no, it was a hilariously placed bit of dubbing from who I assume is the prophet. Most of his prophecies are probably about the future's exciting jacket trans. He's yelling at someone who's currently failing to kill the woman in the WRM. Seeing as he's apparently a prophet, I'm guessing he's angry about the terrorist attacks that haven't happened yet. It is clear that you are in need of some assistance. That's why I'm gonna send edgy soft cell to deal with a the problem. They're my best man. They're my only man. The other extra didn't show up this morning. Meanwhile, in the Women's Resistance Movement's secret base, slash mid-budget hotel room, slash shrine to the color beige, a guy who's being outacted by both the room's aircon controls and his own costume has arrived with some weapons. I assume no one is wearing a wire. Because it'd be too much work to actually check. Haha! <laughs> I am so fucking great at this. They remove their uniform cloaks to reveal that they might conceivably still be wearing a wire. And the scene continues. He's brought only the finest and most advanced weapons to help them wage their war. Weapons like a miniature crossbow. We saw them using actual guns literally two minutes earlier. Clearly this insult to the professional pride deserves a swift and merciful death. Be careful with that. You could hurt someone. <coughs> Did you have to kill him? Yeah, the script told me to. If I didn't do it, then how could the film ever pretend nuance? This should be a testament to how lazy this film is. They could have come up with any actual reason for her to kill him. Up to and including him dressing like a prick. But they didn't. Be careful with that. You could hurt someone. <laughs> They just gave a kick the dog moment to the ones who are nominally the heroes, and why? I'm gonna leave that till the end. Inadequate, incapable, inept, and amateur. Those are the words I hear describing you back at the Capitol. Those are the words I'm using to describe this scene in general. You're the laughing stock of the entire nation. And considering the nation has also seen my beard, that's saying something. Obligatory villain speech over, it's time for the plot to continue, unaffected by Beardy Dave Rubin and his goggled friend's presence. As the worm got into a fight with some innocent Civil Warian actors. Take them alive. Yes, sir. The 
they're really dedicated to the roles, up to and including recapturing runaway enslaved people. I love how his response to being told to Take them alive. Yes, sir. Is to whip out a fucking katana and swing it at the nearest woman's head. Take them alive. Yes, sir. Are your men on the right pills? Maybe you should execute that traitor. This scene is like Sucker Punch if it was an actual Sucker Punch and left the choreographer two days to stand, let alone do his job. In practical outfits or not, the woman can kill the guys several times each and are victorious. Alas, they're being followed by one of the evil guys from before, and as they say, the only thing that can defeat some woman in impractical outfits is a man in an even more impractical outfit. What the hell are you doing? Uh, desperately searching for a C-list animated guest star in. Get them! Why don't you get them? <laughs> Holy fuck, I can't believe that worked. So this superhuman instantly chases down the two women who had a massive head start on him and grabs one of them by her Achilles hair, disarming her instantly. Go, Kendra! Run! Yes, run! It's not like we outnumber him or anything! He then knocks her out by yelling, Wah! <laughs> Aims a gun at the other woman, who's still running away and then lowers it, letting her escape. Apparently the voice only works at really close range. Ch Through sound and motion, you will be able to paralyze nerves. Or knock a slight brown-haired woman unconscious. You had orders to take them alive, you run like an Usain bolt of lightning, and after you captured one of your targets, you thought about killing the other one, before going completely the other direction and letting her go. Even though she was much closer to you than they both were when you started running. We'd call you a fucking idiot, but that really appears to be a common job description in this film. In this shot, we have the obligatory alternate history Zeppelin. I have no idea who rents those things out, but business must be rough if this shit can afford one. We fell. Talk to the hand. We fell. Really? I'm sure getting across that courtyard and captured was at least part of your mission. I'd call that a partial success. Holy fuck, they gave the leader an eye patch with pointless distracting studs and a strap that makes it almost impossible to see out of her other eye? That is almost amazing. Seeing as women are subjugated and all, I wonder what her everyday excuse for that injury is. That she walked into a dorm at a bears, a less dangerous than usual Black Friday. For the sisterhood. Holy shit, it's a tad ironic, but she has the mouth of a Dick Tracy villain. Well, she looks angry enough to start a turf war over this. They should try to be a bit more inclusive in future, less sisterhood and more sisterhood. Anyway, since the state can't suffer jet a bitch to live, it's time to televise the death of the captured paramilitary. Fucking hell, I often wondered what the media from Robocop would be like if it wasn't ironic. Then I saw NRA TV. You stop the film for a chat show but a fucking hanging, you don't even make a news noose pun. I'm not disappointed, I'm just really angry. Live from the Ministry of News studio, I'm three-time national hangman of the year. Jerry Cable. And I'm Paul Gleason. Jerry Cable and Paul, we couldn't even be bothered to think of a shit pun. And I'm Paul Gleason, the not to his deuce. <laughs> okay, they could think of a shit pun. Hi, I'm a twerp with a mustache. And I'm very well hung. At least that's what the ladies say if they don't want to be very well hung. <laughs> the correct word is hanged. You're ruining the banter, Jerry! <laughs> If you're just now tuning in, the event of the season is about to start. The Hanging of Emily Harrison. How oh, boring. If that's the event of the season, then it must be Walking Dead Season 2. Man, fuck that farm. Do they spend most of the time hanging even duller, more nondescript women? Meanwhile, in the Hall of Justice playset, it's showtime. And a nice touch, Emily's not changed her outfit since her capture. And an even nicer touch is not being executed by the only character to be referred to as a hangman in the entire fucking film. I'm three-time National Hangman of the Year, Jerry Cable. This universe split off over a hundred years ago. They don't use the quicker, long-drop hanging method, not because it was invented after the split, because it wasn't, but because they're cunts. Oh, and the actual hangman now appears to be the captain for the pirate planet, crossed with a heroin addiction. Okay. Now, Emily can get enough air as long as she doesn't panic. She can catch her breath when she stomps her feet down as the upper momentum lifts her up. Says the meticulously researched notes of a serial killer waiting for his chance. Bad as it is, most of this film is pretty quick. Scenes are fast and the plot moves along, but not this. This lasts just long enough for one of these pricks presenting the show to ejaculate into their desk. And then replace it because they blew a hole in the ceiling. 
Watch the timer on your screen. Although a select group is in the gallows gallery. A select few that somehow includes some of her gang. You'd think that's as dumb as everything else happening, but it's okay. The boss took her eye patch off because that's how disguises work. The worldwide audience watching this broadcast is breaking all records. Movie, I have some questions. About 13 minutes ago, not in the review, in the film, I read the crawl at the start and it said that A, America had been isolated from the rest of the world for a hundred years, and B, that the rest of the world had collapsed into the anarchy that comes from not hanging attractive young woman. HOW THE FUCK ARE THEY WATCHING?! And if the American system works so well and the rest of the world knows it, then why didn't they start doing the same? And if they did start doing the same, why would they be watching this shit when they could be watching their own freakish, locally flavored executions presented by some twats that don't need to be subtitled? I'm three-time national hangman of the year, Jerry Cable. And I'm Paul Gleason, the not to his deuce. <laughs> There's the photographer from the examiner getting a picture. He got kicked hard in the testicles when he tried to take a photo of him. He got kicked hard in the testicles the last time he tried to take an upskirt shot. Unfortunately for him, the woman wasn't being hanged at the time. He's keeping a safe distance now. <laughs> Girls, every time you are tempted to disrespect a man, Imagine yourself in Emily's place. The sequel to The Red Pill went in an unexpected, but not altogether shocking new direction. Eventually, the hanging goes on for so long that the commentators start with this. Emily taught a class in flirtation and seduction for new recruits at the WRN Academy. Women are taught how to have sex with a policeman until he is unconscious. She taught them how to have sex with a man until he fell unconscious. That's a lot less impressive than you think. In murder, they're sleeping together. Well, at least part of that sentence makes sense. In universe, this has been going on for 15 minutes at this point. What is it with dystopias and really shit entertainment? You see, Haganistan's a utopia. Everyone gets to watch my show, and if you die laughing, we televise that instead. <laughs> Wasn't that funny, Erod? <laughs> Better. At least when Doctor Who did a story about assholes watching public executions, they had a laughing turd and Sean Connery's son getting blasted with a lamp. Both things that would make this much more interesting. She isn't so sassy and insolent now, is she, Paul? We're entering minute 35 of an 18-minute short film. Time flies when you're having fun and this film does horrific things to time dilation. In a way, this can get worse. If he wants to, the current prophet can never cut down. When they are revived, a productive man is rewarded with the resistance fighter as a wife. But Paul, oh, there is no shortage of men willing to re-educate her. Take a shot! Oh no. No, 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 that's not big enough. Take a bigger shot. <laughs> Oh, that's more like it. Fill it next time! Oh. I got 25 minutes. <laughs> Look at her do the jig! Well, whoever the fuck you are, I'm glad that you're so happy that you finally realized you had a line. Dance, baby! Dance! <laughs> After spending literally a third of the film hanging out, hanging out, hanging out with the fuckwits, having ourselves a viewing party. She finally becomes Mystique. And as we all know, being Mystique in a bad enough film is fatal. Official time of death, 24 minutes, 53 seconds. Her friends kick into action getting revenge. They waited because it would be rude to strike back before they finish the thing you're getting revenge for. The WRM are dangerous, intelligent, organized, and unmerciful. Look at the deranged fucking nerd says unmerciful instead of merciless. We've been breached! Uh, dude, if you grab a human shield, it is not traditional to grab your own superior officer. Turns out that they had more than enough time and ability to get into the building and save their friend. I know this because five pissed off women with guns managed to get through the guards between them and the whole government and massacre everyone including the Prophet, who they kill by a jump cut. 
He didn't see that coming. I then assume they destroy the entire fucking state. And it takes them fucking seconds to do it once they decide to leave their fucking base. What I don't understand is how the government lasted as long as it did. If it was that week, someone should have brought it down by accident. I will die. To be continued. Is that a fucking threat? Anyway, over the credits, they play a sub, 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 sub. Sub, 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 sub. Sub, 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 sub. Sub, 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 sub. Sub, 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 sub. 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 Sub, sub. Sub. Sub? Sub, 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 sub. Sub. Sub, 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 sub. Great, now I lost count. Over the credits, they play a sub, 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 sub. Oh, fuck it, take the subs as red. Riot Girl song. I am done, I am done, I am done, I am done, your property. Oh, and we end with some more hanging woman, because woman should be seen and not haired. Okay, this film appears to be a pretty simple story about brave women fighting back against oppression and winning. They're photogenic, they kick ass, and they attain their freedom to the sound of early 90s style girl power rock. But as a narrative, it makes some weird choices. Stuff like the crawl directly connecting the oppression of women to a successful society well run. Stuff like having the heroes kill the arms dealer for literally no reason. Stuff like having the WRM blow up that orphanage. Stuff like having the violence and oppression from the state fully realized and treated seriously. But treating the final victory of the woman as a cartoon. And finally, stuff like having a third of the film taken up by fairly realistic hanging. Now, generally, these are the kind of weird and very inexplicable things that happen in films made by wannabe auteurs. But on the other hand, there's an article from the Oklahoma Gazette about the film and the shit surrounding it. It's linked below. I would say fuck that guy, but I kind of hope no one ever does. This is fucking awful. The story's basic, the world building is offensive, the costuming is hilarious. It's got some of the worst action I've ever seen, and I saw zombie genocide. Even the song at the end was god-awful, and I didn't even realize it was possible to fuck up Riot Girl. Think of this as a companion piece to The Handmaid's Tale, but a wholly unwanted companion. You can watch this on Vimeo, if you must. I'm Demanda Hagen, and I have to live with that every day.